Hello, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. We're going to finish off this junk journal, which can of course also be a folio or a flip book. You don't have to include a signature, but this is what I'm going to do today. And I'm also going to do some more decorations because <laughs> I can't stop. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I, I don't have measurements as usual. I'm just cutting the paper to be a little smaller than my cover. So I cannot tell you the measurement. You do whatever works for your envelopes. And by the way, I think my next video, if you're interested, is going to show how I tea dye because a lot of you have mentioned that you want to see my process. Even though it's nothing special, I'm happy to show it. So I think that might be my next video along with showing how I edit and make my videos because that has been a request as well and I think I'm going to combine those two videos into one so hopefully some of you will be interested in seeing that process I will share all my secrets with you <laughs> so what you see here is I have stitched these two ledger papers together and this is such a cool and and actually not even hard thing to do I learned this from my friend Angelica's channel, Angelica Schlager. She's also here in Vienna. And um, I will link her video down below. It's very, very simple. You just stitch a, like a zigzag stitch down uh, in between two papers. And there you have a, like a folded paper. So all the images you wanted to have upright that you couldn't put upright because your papers were too small you can just stitch together and put in a signature so how cool and easy is that that's much easier than making a hinge with paper or something this is just so quick and easy if you have a sewing machine so check out her video if this is something you're interested in and so now i'm just adding so i've added a few coffee dyed papers i've added a few coffee dyed ledger papers um, the others are just plain, cof, uh, plain copy papers. And now, as you can see, I'm also adding just a few random papers, like this is a small receipt and whatever I can basically find. But I did not want the signature to become very bulky. This is a little pamphlet of the Pennsylvania Railroad. So I'm including one of those as well, just because I think it's fun. This is a calendar from 1954. Also gonna include a page of that. So I'm just trying to vary the papers a little bit just to give them more interest and I will embellish, embellish them just a little bit afterwards. It's probably easier to do that before you've sewn them in. I didn't decide to do that until they were in my, in my cover. So just a little tip, it's easier to do it now while your papers can still be separated and you have a smooth surface for stamping if you want to stamp, for example. So yeah, just a little tip. So now I'm, I'm going to sew my signature into my cover right where we put the cheesecloth. And what I'm doing here is I looked for the middle of my envelope. So I punched a hole right center in the middle and then I went six centimeters to the left and to the right of that middle point and punched a hole in there as well because we're, we're going to be doing a three hole pamphlet stitch. And I'm doing the exact same thing on my signature after I have made sure they are clamped together and do not move. So rather, usually I would make a template of where I should punch my holes. But since it's just one signature, I decided to do it this way because it was quicker. And thankfully everything lined up just fine. And now I'm choosing a fairly big needle and this embroidery thread because I think it goes well with the tea dye and coffee dyed papers. And I took two and a half lengths of my journal. That's how much thread I cut off and now I'm starting in the middle and I'm going from the inside out and then I'm going from that middle outside I'm going to the top hole back into the journal then I'm going all the way to the bottom hole and out of the bottom hole and then back into the middle hole
the second time and now I'm going to tie just making sure that everything is very snug and the, the thread isn't loose anywhere. I'm just going to tie a double knot around my middle um, thread there and then I'm going to cut those off pretty short. Of course you can leave them long, you can attach some beads, that would be cute as well, but for this type of journal in this kind of grungy style I kind of just wanted to keep it very simple. So our signature is in, so I am just closing it now with the twine that I have used. I'm just checking how bulky it is now. So there you see it's 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 totally fine. Of course it's going to get more more bulky once once it will be used, but this is fine. And I just wanted to see what it would look like in a traveler's notebook leather cover. So this is an old cover I've had for quite a while. And I really like the look of that. It fits in perfectly. And I will show you at the end also in my new traveler's notebook in the black one that I have, um, how that will look once everything is done. So now what I wanted to do was, oh yeah, I <laughs> just before this video, I tried aging some tape. Um, one of my lovely viewers has, have, has sent me a video on how to age like regular shiny tape. And the problem is you're supposed to do it with alcohol ink, but I didn't have any and I didn't want to order any because I couldn't buy any now anyway. But I didn't want to order any. Either. So I tr I thought, let me try it with this Liquitex Clear Gesso. Oh, and by the way, can I just say, um, as always, all the products I can will be linked below in my description box. So I'm using some, after that was dry, that uh, clear gesso, I'm using some brown ink, like regular ink you would use for calligraphy, because I had that. <laughs> And now I'm trying one of it with the yellow. I don't know why I thought that might be a cool effect, but it was horrible, as you can see. <laughs> so don't do that. Please learn from my mistakes. Make your own mistakes. Don't use, don't make mine. <laughs> so forget the yellow. I added some more brown there, but it didn't work as well anymore because obviously I'd already also rubbed off some of the clear gesso. So that didn't work work so well but these are these are two I've just done um, that were dry already that I've done just before starting the video so you see it does look grunged up but it is quite dark so maybe you have a lighter brown that would work better in any case I used it to cover up some tears in in that uh, invoice that I have and these stamps you prop if you know my channel you've probably seen these before on my channel these are vintage stamps that I have bought from my friend Allison in the States I will also link her Instagram again below but I know that currently she does not have any I don't know when or if she's gonna get more you can probably also find these sometimes in bulk on eBay I've never tried that because I don't use eBay, but um, yeah, if you're desperate to find some, that's probably a place worth looking, or maybe Etsy has some, I don't even know, but I don't think so because I think I checked that. So anyway, I wanted to use vintage stamps because this is a vintage style journal, and I also am going to be using some clear stamps as well, but uh, for the most part, I'm using these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vintage stamps. And I, I like the fact that sometimes they don't stamp very precisely and they look grungy. So perfect for a vintage journal. So I'm not going to stress about that. And as you can see, I'm also including a, a writing board underneath so that they stamp somewhat better. So yeah, as I said, it would have been better to do this before it was sewn in. But for the lack of planning, I did not do that. <laughs> So uh, most of these stamps are actually from an apple orchard, so I think they are quite fun. That's why there's quite a few numbers here as well. And I just love the look of these. I'm using my black archival ink for this. I wanted to make sure that it's waterproof and um, permanent. And I'm just going through the pages and using my stamps. All 
All right, this here is a set that came in the Your Creative Studio subscription box, stationary subscri subscription box. And uh, I'm not sure which month that was in, but I really love that set. It's so cool and has this very, very nice vintage stamp. Look how beautiful that is. I just love that so much. And then I thought I would also include two holes on this particular page. So I'm just punching two holes and I'm gonna add these two reinforce hole reinforcers, hole reinforcement rings, whatever they're called, which I have dyed with my vintage photo distress oxide. And of course I'm adding those on both sides and that has no function. <laughs> it's just because I think it looks really cool. And I think I've seen Nick the Booksmith do that in one of her journals. This is a stamp set which is from AliExpress and I will link this one down below. And I really love this one particular stamp which seems to be the only one that is like really vintage on that set. The others do look a quite bit more modern. So I'm going to be adding that to this page. Look how cool that is. That one I could also imagine looking really cool if you stamp it on a cardstock and then cut it out and then use that. This is a set I got in the States from Michaels a year and a half ago and it's from Finna Bear. And I love, love, love this stamp, stamp set. There's two I got and I, both, I love both of them so much. They're so versatile and I use it in so many different projects. So I'm using this one that says postcard, even though this is obviously not a postcard, but I still think it looks really cool on this ledger paper. And then from the same stamp set, I also want to use this pointy finger. All right, we are done with the stamping and now I wanted to fix some things in the journal that I was not happy with. So first of all, I didn't like that this, see how that just flaps around? It just opens randomly and it gets in the way and that's not good. So I wanted to secure that envelope somehow and I've watched Bohemian Crafting. By the way, this is a punch that I got at a craft fair. So this one I cannot link unfortunately. Um, it has three different um, like labels there, which are really cool. And this is something I've seen Eva from Bohemian Crafting do a lot in her journals and flipbooks and what have you. So you just make a little hinge there with a brad and then that will secure whatever you want it to secure. So I glued three of these on top of each other just to make it really sturdy. So this is 200 GSM cardstock. So having three, that means you have 600 GSM. So that's really cool. And this circle is from a die cut set. I will try to link that one below as well. Actually, I think I have that one too. That's also from Ali. And this is your famous ticket booth stamp set from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to use a part as I've done previously. Uh, this, the top part, the number part of one of the tickets and so I'm being very careful to ink up just that top part and I'm going to stamp that on our little hinge there and it actually came out perfectly. So that's going to go on top of that circle that I've already glued down so I'm punching a small hole with my crop -a dial not the big hole, but the small hole. And now I'm going to punch a hole right through the circle with my awl, making sure not to punch all the way through to the other side of the envelope. <laughs> and then I'm going to use this brad, which is a Tim Holtz brad. And we're going to secure that on top of the circle and carefully attaching that to the one side of the envelope and then pushing that down really hard. 
So that is the hinge. And then on the inside of the envelope, I am going to add a circle. I'm going to glue that on to the inside right, uh, right on top of where the brad ends are, right like that. Because first of all, it keeps the brad from turning and also it, um, it makes that nothing gets stuck on the inside when you're trying to put a card or something into the envelope. Um, nothing will get stuck on, on those hinges, uh, on those little bits. And this outer envelope I'm going to simply secure with this little Tim Holtz paper clip. So now nothing kind of um, flaps around, which is a lot better. But we're not done yet with that inside. I wanted to include something in this tuck spot. So I wanted to make like a little tag or something. One side of the tag was going to be this, uh, a part of this uh, Tim Holtz cardstock, which is from the Industrial French collection. And the other side was going to be a part of this paper, which is a, I don't know, it's an interesting paper. I don't think it's a ledger paper, but it has a very interesting kind of grid, which I really enjoy. So I am tearing that and I'm going to check that it's the size I want. I didn't want to cover up that decoration I had on the top. And now I'm going to measure the same size on the Tim Holtz paper. And then I'm going to glue them both together, hoping that they are sort of the same size. <laughs> and adjusting it just a little bit. So next I'm going to take my tea dye distress oxide and go around the edges on both sides. On the other side, which is lighter, I am, I'm laying it down so that I have a more, how should I say, um, so that it's not such a harsh line so that I can blend it better while it's laying down. And then I thought I would also make a collage on that other side. So that's actually going to be the back side. This is going to be our front, which we're going to decorate some more. So this is a stamp, which I'm pretty sure is from Ali, but I just checked. I cannot find it anymore. So that is, is often the problem with, with AliExpress things that you, did they just disappear. So my intention was to use, again, the tea, uh, the tea dye Distress Oxide and just make a very light background pattern. And I really love how this turned out. I, I was trying this for the first time. I wasn't sure how well it's going to show up, but it's beautiful. It was just the right amount. And these are printouts from the Digital Collage Club for the from the 100 Vintage Ephemera, um, I think it's called Illustrations? No, 100 Pieces Ephemera, 100 Vintage Ephemera, something. I don't remember. <laughs> it's it's going to be linked below. So I've used these already in the first two parts. By the way, if you missed the first two parts of this uh, junk journal, then uh, those will be linked down below as well. And so I'm adding, added those to the front and the back of the tag sort of to be like a tab. And this is also from the same collection. And this is going to be my focal point. I'm just going to make a small collage. And I'm tearing the edges with my tearing ruler. And I will try to link that below again as well. Um, in the past, I've linked it and then they didn't have it anymore in those places. So I'm hoping that the link I have will still work. If it does, it, you will find it below. And I'm also now cutting some cheesecloth to give it some more texture. Fringing the edges a bit. And then I'm choosing some background paper. So these are some scraps that I had. I wanted this to have multiple layers. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna glue down some layers on this. This is some piano paper. And maybe you will notice that um, I'm not actually putting things down in straight lines or you see my pieces here are not necessarily always totally straight so that is 
very non-typical for me so but I do like how it turned out actually I'm very surprised that I did this <laughs> I'm doing this on the next collage too and um, yeah I don't know what happened there because usually everything has to be straight and vertical or horizontal and not in weird angles but somehow this worked for me it would have been I guess I thought it would be too boring if if everything would just be vertical or horizontal for this I don't know why yeah it was a gut feeling so now I'm using my tacky glue to glue down this piece of cheesecloth and I'm gonna glue this focal point over it and then we'll add a little bit more stamping to it and that will be one tag and we'll make another one for the other side then So that's that so far. I am enjoying those different layers. And then I'm going back to this to this Finabare stamp set and it has a whole bunch of very small phrases and the one I'm using here is less perfection, more authenticity, which is one of my favorite ones that I've seen so far in any sets. So that one is going on the bottom. And then we'll have a tiny word on the top because there's one that says note. So that's just going to go in the middle on top there. And that is our tag for the tuck spot. So now we're going to put it in our tuck spot. And I think that works really well with the rest of the cover just checking that that still works <laughs> it's always fun to play with with the interactive elements i think so now going on to the back side of our cover we still had this one pocket which needed something in it so that's what we're gonna make next for this i chose another one of the french industrial cardstock pieces this is the one that you find in the back that has like small squares of the big 12 by 12 papers so I'm going to cut out a piece of that and this is again something I've learned from Eva from Bohemian crafting is to make the top like that with your punch board and I think that's very cute and it's just a little bit something Something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna round the, the top, uh, the bottom corners as well, and then I'm gonna collage on it. Um, I have this tea dyed bingo paper that I'm going to just tear, and again I'm going to make a few different layers. So that's one layer and then it shows a few more pieces that I found that I have just coffee dyed. So there's this tiny little index card. There's a little half of a doily. And I'm going to try to arrange these in an interesting way. Again, you see I'm slanting things. <laughs> and I chose this from the same Digital Collage Club collection. To be the focal point and again I'm going to tear all those edges off because I wanted it to have rugged edges and of course I'm inking this up again using my vintage photo for that and that is going to be the focal point but I believe I do also add a bit of cheesecloth as well just making that index card a little bit smaller and I wanted it to have a torn edge as well There's a bit of cheesecloth. Just wanted to add that for some more texture. So then I glued everything. No, I didn't glue it down yet. First, I wanted to again use this vintage stamp. This is actually the favorite one of all the ones I have. Just to add a little bit more grunge. And then there's another one. This one that I'm going to add on the bottom. 
and we will also be adding a little bit of tape afterwards. All right, so now I've glued everything down. And now I wanted to use a part of this colored or dyed tape that I had. And since it was so dark, I decided to cut it in half lengthwise. So it wouldn't be so dominant. I'm going to put one piece on the bottom there and I actually love how that looks. I'm going to take the other half and cut it down even a little bit more and put it on the top like that. And then I'm also going to be adding my favorite Tim Holtz washi, which is this beautiful, beautiful grid washi. We'll add a piece there and another piece where the other brown tape is. And I believe that tag is finished. Really enjoy how that turned out. I just love all these neutral colors and browns. I'm so into those colors at the moment <laughs> for a while now actually. So that is going to slip into our back pocket. So that's what it looks like now. Uh, you can see it, it's not hugely bulky. So I, I really didn't want this to become too bulky. And yeah, this is what it looks like in my newest Traveler's Notebook. This is the original Traveler's Notebook and I love this one so much. I'm using it all the time. And so now I took off the closure because you don't need it once it's in a Traveler's Notebook. And um, yeah, I, I, I put my, my elastic in the middle and so just having a quick flip through and I put the cards that were on either side of the cover in my inside cover of the Traveler's Notebook, you see right there. And it just fits beautifully and I think it looks amazing, but of course you don't have to do that. You can just have it on its own, that's why it has the string attached and um, yeah, you don't even have to put in a signature. So this is very versatile and I hope it gave you some inspiration for your own projects. And um, yeah, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and if you haven't already. So thank you so much for joining me and hope to see you again soon. Bye.